Do you want to know the secrets of the secondhand subculture? Everything about auctions, estate sales, appraisals, and downsizing? What about learning how to make some extra money in the resale world? Well, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to Why Don't You Want My Stuff, the podcast hosted by professional appraiser, auctioneer, and the host of YouTube's Last Week at the Auction, Josh Levine. Hey, it's me again. This is Josh from Why Don't You Want My Stuff, and we're here for another podcast. Apparently, they haven't kicked us off the air yet. Is it the air? It's not the air. Is it? What is it? What are we on? I don't even know. Anyway, I introduced myself last week or the week before or whatever order we're playing these in, and uh, I want to tell you I'm not all doom and gloom. I'm really happy these days. I'm seeing all sorts of cool things in antiques and collectibles. One of the really weird ones I'm starting to see, and I'm not I'm not going to save this for the end. I want to talk about what's hot these days and cassette tapes. You... you I never thought it would happen. We saw LPs come back several years ago. Vinyl, you know, one of my uh, my my uh, one of my side hustles is uh, is Amazon affiliate marketing. Don't steal that idea. It's brilliant. I'm, there's a million people doing it. Amazon affiliate marketing, and I'm selling re- like three or four record players a day, which is crazy. So record players are like super super cool. Vince just pointed to a company just wanted me to do a. Uh, uh, an unboxing of a record player that he just pointed to. Sorry, guys, I'm like two months late doing that. Maybe we'll do that. That would be great. I don't have a record here today. Anyway, back to, uh, you know, we all know vinyl's hot. Vinyl's back. The vinyl that people are looking for, you know, there's that's a whole nother subject. The genres are amazing. And you'll see trends change quickly, like... Uh, like when it first came out, a lot of the northern soul in the 50s and that, that was in and and the blues and jazz is still hot. But what people didn't know was all of a sudden it was going to move into punk and metal. And there's some punk records from the 80s that are worth a fortune and you might have them in your, in your attic. So, you know, it's anyway. So cassette tapes are back. I didn't think it would happen, and from what I'm reading and what I'm hearing, it's not the nostalgia. It's not the Gen Xers like myself who go, where's my rat cassette? You know, it's not that. It's the people that watched Guardians of the Galaxy and went, wow, cassette tapes are kind of cool, and like, it's not nostalgia, it's it's steampunk. It really is. So look for cassette tapes. It's one that people do not know. It's funny. Just recently at an auction, I was bidding on some uh, Black Sabbath cassettes. Now, that's why I was bidding on them. And it was literally just to resell them. I did a little research beforehand. I saw on eBay that they were bringing 10 to 15 bucks a piece. And mind you, when people have cassette tapes, they don't have one. They had like 30, so I was like, there's 30 cassette tapes here at an auction. The bidding's at $5, and I see three or four of them that are worth $15 a piece. You do the math. There were 30 of them, so you know, I left a bid of $50, confident that I was the only one that knew vintage cassettes were good, expecting my bid to win. I was outbid. They sold for $115. Still a lot of profit in there, but cassette tapes. Now, just to give you an example, two years ago, worthless they wouldn't have got a five dollar bid on that you know and this trend could last a short period of time we don't know once everyone gets that Dawkins or rat or kiss tape that they're missing or iron maiden seven son of a seven son i don't know well you know that's that's is this just me you're looking for like what are you looking for three dog night no oh no i don't know why they're in my head today i don't I don't know any three dog night other than the fact that they used to have a K tell record that they would sell. Anyway, let's go on to what else is like cassette tapes. I don't today. I'm not going to do the Chinese market. Chinese antiques and collectibles are the wild west and prices are nuts. I'm that's going to be a show onto itself. Um, but I am going to talk about hot wheels. Okay. And specifically hot wheels, red lines, the, the vintage cars that, you know, late 60s early 70s those your big brother might have had them you might have had some i'm dating myself i ha- i wasn't allowed to have them because my parents decided that only matchbox would be a good investment in my future so i got matchbox cars that are worth about five six dollars a piece instead of the cars i wanted which would be worth about three four hundred five hundred to five thousand dollars a piece 
but we all know I would have uh, thrown them in the bridge over the bridge anyway and and blew them up with M80s, so I wouldn't have them anyway. So there's no use pining away for them, but they are out there. I actually just found a couple at Goodwill. They were beat, but they were 50 bucks a piece, and they were selling a bag of them for $3. So look for the red lines. They're really, really... Now, also, they reissued them a few years back. So if the kid got a hold of them and beat them up a little bit, they look like they're vintage ones. You need to know what to look for. They uh, usually are... the Most of the newer ones are made in China. You're looking for the made in Japan, Hong Kong variants. But they are, we sold, gosh, a VW Bug uh, a few years back for like $4,000. So that just gives you, and this was not new in the package. This was out of the package. So they're out there and records are being set. I don't know what the record is. I should have looked it up beforehand, but it's probably twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. I mean, some of these can be worth a small fortune. A buddy of mine in Illinois sells these uh, Wiley, and, and the prices are just insane what he gets for them, and Matt does as well uh, at Matthew Bullock Auctioneers. They, they just have the prices are crazy. So look out for Hot Wheels cars. You want to keep an eye out for them. There are even some limited edition runs from the early 2000s we just saw that were like five, 600 bucks. And I would have never expected that because once things, and that's, I'm going to talk about short and you'll hear me say this, beat this home. When something says it's collectible on the package, it's not collectible. 99.9% of the time. So once we knew to save things in the past, like Star Wars figures. Everybody, unless you live under a rock, first edition, the first run, the 77 Star Wars figures, new carded in the package are a gold mine. But like when you got into like, you know, episode, well, let's see, uh, like Revenge of the Sith, no one threw out the packages. Everybody kept them in the package because they're all banking on, on them being worth some money. That's why the other ones are worth money because no one thought of that. They took them out and played with them. So that's why those are collectible. So when things are known to be collectible or made to be collectible, it rarely is. However, I will be proven wrong by that 20 years from now when some of those uh, appreciate, and I'm sure they will. And it could be for a multitude of reasons. It could be because when Justin Bieber's 70 years old, he goes, I really like these. And that'll be, you know. That'll make them worth a ton of money. I make jokes about that a lot. I always say if I can get Justin Bieber and Kim Kardashian to start collecting Hummels again, Hummel figurines, they'd be worth a fortune. So come on, Justin, do it. Take one for the the German figurine collectible team. Is there a team of those people? I bet there is. I bet there is. So I want to point that out that those are really hot. What else do I want to point out? I'm trying to think what I have. Uh, Let's see. What else? What do I, what am I talked about today? What's a collectible Vince that I, you've heard that I've, Oh, Oh yeah. Well, comic books, you want to go down that? That's going to be its own show. I know what I'll talk about. There was something right before comic books. Oh my gosh. Not baseball cards. That's a show. Not coins and collect. That's a show. You know what? I will. No, because that should be its own show. Uh, oh, my gosh. I had something. Something odd. Not baseball cards. Man, this part's going to have to be chopped up. Oh, I'm starting to see uh, lunch boxes coming back a little bit, which uh, I'm glad to see. That market. Let me let's talk about lunch boxes. I'll never forget a dealer telling me this story. The reason lunch boxes it, it had they had a window in the late nineties, early two thousands on eBay where you know a good vintage lunch box was bringing fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, and it was crazy. And I even remember thinking then, I'm like, I have one of those, I have one of those, I had one of those, and going that meant there were thousands of them out there. So why were they? It was nostalgia, and people started to collect them. And there was also a price guide. So one very intelligent person was one of the world's, he had one of the world's largest lunchbox collections. So he decided to write a lunchbox book and when you book, and when you get, when you wrote the book, guess what you got to do? You got to put what the prices were and the values. 
So he basically created the market and the valuation of what these things were worth and then promptly auctioned his collection. And the world it loved it and bought it hook, line, and sinker. And, you know, then all of a sudden, everyone started bringing them out and they started going on eBay. And what happened was the first couple that came out, the prices were strong. And then when the world started to realize, wait, there's 100,000 Beatles yellow submarine lunch boxes out there. Maybe I should get picky about condition. And all of a sudden they got into condition that actually grading and condition is going to be a show coming up and a great topic to discuss because they're grading everything now. But that's what happens. Collectors upscale. They want to get a better version of what they have. So these lunchboxes, they really kind of got soft. And unless you had a dead mint with hang tags and the original thermos, the prices really started to flatten. And I remember when that first started to happen, I was like, man, you know, I should start. If I had space, this was something I would have bought about five six years ago because I I did believe that next wave of nostalgia because you know what it's kind of cool people love conversation pieces and if you walk by and somebody's got like you know the a Beatles lunch box or Superman or a kiss lunch box from the 70s people notice it and it's a conversation piece and you have that in your house and people see it people like that it's a great kind it's better than talking about the weather or politics with your family it's like hey where'd you get that cool beatles lunchbox so it's a cool uh topic of conversation here's one that uh you know what i'll make this i'll make this my strange collectible here's my strange collectible of the day beer cans oh my god beer cans if you know what Pre-pro means, it's a cool term in beer cans, pre-prohibition. Those beer collectibles before prohibition and the cone tops, steel cans, there are people paying fifty and $60,000 for the right beer can. And it happens almost every other week online. People ask me, where do you find out about this stuff? And look, I'm going to give you a way. One, I watch my own show. Last week at the auction on YouTube. No, I don't. I don't watch it. I'm in it live. I, I live it. But where I get all this information from is live auctioneers and Invaluable and Bid Spotter and High Bid. These are all auction platforms that you can research and eBay and you can research their sold completed prices and follow the trends. So you can watch, you know, you can see their, they all publish like a news or a blog talking about, and so does Antique Trader Magazine. They'll publish like, hey, this was really cool and this is what this brought last week. But I like to just scour like a lot of the auctions that specialize in estates and I'll just sort that auction by the highest price and I'll look at the last week's auction and try to see like, What's the trend? What am I seeing? And it's why I've been talking about furniture prices are up a little bit recently. Antique furniture, which is nice to see because it's been dead for so many years, unless it's mid-century modern. But I'm starting to see some 19th century and 18th century furniture uh, tick up. I'm starting to see other. But that's where I ran into beer cans. And it was like, I think last year we might have featured five or six beer cans because I just can't. I like to feature things over and over again sometimes. One, because I find it interesting. And two, so you don't forget it. Because when you're cleaning out, you know, Uncle Harvey's, you know, hunting cabin and you're just gutting it because this is what happens. People want to sell. the. Someone dies. You know what they want to sell? The real estate. And that's all they think about. And they go, let's get this junk out of here. And they throw away everything in there except for the furniture because, like, oh, that must be worth money. And they, all the smalls and the little, you know, like like beer cans are the things they get rid of. That reminds me of another one. Pens. I'm going to throw at you pens. And that's not a weird collectible. That's just a collectible fact. It's pens. And I have can't tell you how many thousands of dollars I've rescued out of dumpsters and garbage cans for estates where they called me in to look at the art and antiques and the furniture in the house. And I looked in their garbage can and saw they had just dumped grandpa's drawer into the garbage can because the family's in the process of cleaning the house out. They only have a week. You know, the family flew in to clean out the house to get it ready so they could sell that real estate. And there's been several times where the things in the house were worth more money than the house. So that's not true in all occasions, but it's out there. You know what? 
I'm going to have a more exciting show for you next week. I hope you follow this podcast. And that's all I got to say about that. Today's episode is a wrap. Thank you for listening to Why Don't You Want My Stuff with Josh Levine. If you're interested in learning more or becoming an expert, please follow and support the show by rating us on your favorite podcast player. Engage with us. If you have ideas or questions, send an email to josh at joshlevinespeaks.com. Or you can visit www.joshlevinespeaks.com. We'd love to talk about your question on the show. This has been a T-Door production. Music by RKVC.